Hey, how are you doing? It's your Paul here coming at you with another episode for the Unity Mind. Hey, in this video, why are so many people broke? Alright, so being broke, financially broke, actually comes from being broken. Now, before we dive deep into this video, I have a little confession to make and that is, is that I'm not so good at pleasing people. Some people are great people pleasers, I'm not. And that might be sometimes a little bit painful and way too direct into your face and maybe it is something that you don't want to know but I'm here to tell you or to share the things that I've experienced that you need to know in order to grow as a human being and to grow as a human being we have to exercise the strongest muscle that we have which is our energetic heart all right and to exercise this muscle we sometimes have to go through the pain right if you want to if you want to go if you want to work out your muscles you go to the gym you work out and it's sometimes a little bit painful all right so why are so many people financially broke well i always say like um when we are broke here it it, it sometimes it, it always reflects in some areas of our life right could be in our relationships okay maybe in our health or in our career finances all right so it actually always starts from here and that's manifest somehow somewhere in a particular area now in this particular video we talk about your career and your finances so why are so many people financially broke and you know what I talk to you like you are already at a level where you have that awareness that you know what I am NOT a victim I'm not a powerless victim in this world and I am a powerful divine creator and I'm responsible for my own reality and you are already in a stage of being a mind hacker what do I mean with a mind hacker is that um, you you thrive to a higher level of self-reflection to look inside yourself like what is inside of you that is holding you back to create the life that you are after okay so that's why we heard that's what I that's what I do with with the unity mind so we can step above our dramas our stories our bullshit and whatever that is that is holding our back okay because as you might know um we have took a nose dive into consciousness since the last 10, 10 20 000 years all right so we are here to to ascend again in consciousness all right so we can step into our greatness and unleash our intuitive and spiritual powers so why are many so many people financial broke the struggle financially you know the thing is from a mental and intellectual level it's so dumb and stupid simple that we overcomplicate this entire process with being emotional all right so from a service level we know what to do right you might be already knowing what kind of direction to go into right in order to to make money build a business create a, the the life of your dreams right but there is still something at an emotional and spiritual level that is holding you back okay so we have to go into more into depth into that all right so the thing is like i said it's so dumb as stupid simple talking about simple doesn't equal easy and uh, i say dumb as stupid simple is because there are people looking for solutions right in a specific field in a specific niche in a specific whatever right that you can solve okay so the only thing that you basically need to learn is to master your craft and learn the art of communicating solutions so you can build like a bridge and to help and serve those people to get what they want if you do that long enough to enough people then you create the lifestyle of your dreams okay now that means that they are looking for value and you can give them value now before you going to give them value you first have to start with putting some value on yourself because what is between between you providing the solution that they are after and you actually go and taking action is it is that your self image is in the way of providing the solutions to the world all right is helping and serving others okay so here's exactly what I mean with it so what has uh, shaped our self-image I always say you know when we just come here as a, as a little child you know we, we we come with an empty glass right and uh, along the way we fill it up with 
ideas and beliefs from, from our parents and, and from school and from society, the books that we read or don't read, or from religion or anything else, you know, and all those ideas, they have been passed on from generation to generation and from generation. Now, you know, sometimes I go a little bit too far into this and I say like, you know, we have been descended in consciousness for the last 10, 20,000 years, right? We have been descendants and we have been cut off from our spiritual powers from all that time. That's why we experienced the number one uh, cause for suffering, which is lack, all right? Lack is like the, the biggest thing that causes separation, that, that is causing us to serve others, right? We, because we are way too concerned about our self-image, which has been developed by the glass that we are filling up with garbage, right? With, with broken ideas from, from this world. So basically, when it comes to uh, money and helping serving others and growing yourself as a human being and experience life in its utmost, we, we basically, we have to, uh, we have to look at this glass and see what kind of dirty things there are still in and fill it up with pure water, right? Pure consciousness. I, I say water because water is like fluent, all right? It's like energy, right? If you want to feel more abundance, go to the sea and you can feel and experience instant abundance, right? That's why I live close to the sea. I only have to walk five minutes and I can smell the sea okay so that's what we're doing right we are a bunch of mind hackers right we are a bunch of mind hackers that goes into our subconscious minds and we become like archivers of our inner library of thoughts and emotions to figure out like what kind of broken um, broken software programs are running my behavior that I need to break down and see what can I take from it or can I let go okay and the way to do that is of course through mindfulness right through mindfulness because through meditation mindfulness and and you know um you can learn to connect to light right and um step above your bullshit dramas and everything that that's basically holding you back all the fast emotions we all have them but it's not who we are right we are an infinite source because let me give you a couple examples, right? I always say, I always mention these examples from my own experience, right? So for example, when I was like 10 years old, um, my parents divorced, okay? And, and, and my father was in, was, was in a rage. I didn't want to move to my mother's place. I walked away back to my father. My father didn't know what to do with it. And he, of course, he wanted to win the custody over me. So he had to go to a lawyer and all the kind of things, all the kind of drama. And, um, that of course cost him a lot of money so when i saw my my schoolmates getting the amazing amazing playstations and gaming consoles and doing all those kind of things of course i also asked my father can i have a playstation he said no i'm sorry son we don't have money for it if you want money go and work from that of course a good lesson you know i started working when i was 14 years old um which of course i'm i'm, I'm grateful for but the main idea is around money is that uh, money had the idea of survival, right? So for about a decade of my life to the age of 20, I was in a stage of financial, emotional survival, right? That became my blueprint. So once I was growing out of that life, I still had the program of money equals survival, right? You, f you have to fight for your rights. You have to fight for your survival and you don't really think that much about what are you doing to other people in order to to survive, okay? Which is not necessary because it's a fear-based um, behavior, right? We are trying to survive by ourselves and we don't really think about like, how can I serve others in the highest intention as possible, okay? That's not what we are taught to do. So, you can get out of a life of survival, but how do you get the survival out of your mind? Okay, now, and that's something that I've been working on for the last decade, basically, to master that part of my life, okay? So that forms our self-image, right? The self-image of, okay, I have an idea of how I can help other people, 
But what happens when we are in a stage of survival? Basically, we close down, right? Life is a survival. What do we do? We become literally a tight ass. Like this, right? We are holding our butt together to survive, right? We either fight, flight, or freeze up, right? That's what we do in, in, in harsh, in, in difficult times. So when we close down and build this protection wall around us, we only can only think about our own survival, okay? So when we start to, to, to work on this muscle, right? Exercising the muscle exercises the exorcism of negativity, right? So we close down, we're holding a lot of negativity here inside of us, right? Because if we exercise that, then we can act more uh, from a state of unconditional love for what we do and for other people to help them to get them what they want, okay? That's how we get in that infinite flow of abundance. So we have to open it up but by opening up it's like for for many years we closed down right we became like a tight ass and then we open up and it's like we are flying up all the garbage we have holding on to right that's 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 what i like to call the apocalypse of human consciousness the unseen truth revealed to the surface right that's what it means so everything that we've been holding on to for so many years that suddenly comes to the surface Life becomes like a roller coaster, and, 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 and an entire drama that has been created out of nothing that we have still be holding on to. And you know, as I mentioned before, you might get out of a life of survival, but how do you get the survival out of you? That means that even if you don't have to survive anymore, more, right? Our ego is like, hmm, I'm bored. You know, I don't feel that 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 that. Uh, what are, what are, what are, so these intense emotions that you experience during your, during your times of survival that your ego wants like hey that's all what I ever know right I don't know any better I'm going to create a situation that will cause that again and then you get into the same dramatic patterns all over again so there is like a very high level of self reflection needed to break down these patterns that we are living over and over and over again okay and as I mentioned before, the way to do that is, of course, by tapping into your unit of mind through mindfulness and meditation and, and advanced personal development and stuff like that. Okay, so so to sum it up, to sum it up, to get out of your broken situation, and I don't just mean your financial situation because you know finances are always a byproduct of what you're putting your putting your what you put out to the world. Okay, so. We have to become whole again with ourselves, and whole I mean um, work from the heart, right? It's to connect again with our heart and have a level of unconditional uh, love for for, for ourselves, right? Is to value ourselves and is to know exactly is to know exactly our place in the world, because also that's not something that we are uh, taught to do, right? If we grow up in a family of survival, then we are not being taught our place in the world, right? Maybe we are taught like, you're not good enough, you don't belong here, you don't deserve, you don't do this, right? You're not enough, whatever, okay? So we have these broken ideas that cause that separation inside of us. And then what happened is, of course, we, 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 when, when things are painful, we close down and our survival mechanism is going to fight flight or freeze okay so that's what we do that's that's what happened we close down so our job is to open up again to our natural state of being which is unconditional self-love because if we have unconditional self-love we know exactly what it is that we are good at what we enjoy and love to do and what it is that we can help other people with and we just do it because we freaking love to do it it's like a bird singing his song and it doesn't matter if you like his song or not, you can throw a stone to, a stone to the bird, but the bird is not going to stop singing his song, okay? Now, that all begins with breaking down your self-image, okay? Like looking at that glass that has been filled up by the ideas that have been projected on you along the way. Like I said, you know, 
uh, we have been descended in consciousness for the last 10, 20,000 years, so we have been passed on a lot of ideas that includes lack and limitation, fear, anxiety, shame, guilt, whatever, that cause that separation with who you truly are. Okay? Um, so that's how you develop your self-image and your self-image it might be saying stuff about you, drama, uh, uh, stories, you know, uh, such as I have to do things perfect, otherwise it's not good enough. Okay, so you put like high expectations on yourself that immediately cause like the fear of failure, the fear of uh, rejection, because uh, you expect something from yourself, you know, and if you don't belong, if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, be at that level, then you are not good enough, right? So we already have the fear of doing something that we're not going to take any action at all, okay? So that that's, that's an ingredient inside your self-image that is already stopping you from doing anything or investing uh, the time and money to grow yourself as a human being, okay? Okay, so know what kind of ingredients are included in your self-image and then learn to break it down, right? By constantly uh, trying to feel like, wait a minute, where exactly I am today, okay? If I'm not satisfied about that, then always um, go back into yourself and ask yourself, what was I thinking yesterday, last week, the month before? that ended me up right now where I am today, okay? Because with that level of self-reflection, then you can look at your self-image and look at the ingredients and learn to break it down, okay? Become a hacker, break it down and create a new image for yourself, okay? So that's what you do and that is where you start to reunite or remember who you truly are, which is unconditional self-love, unconditional love, and remember or reunite that energetic vibration that is being produced by unconditional self-love, all right? It's to reunite that type of vibration and then you act from the heart. The things that you do is more from a state of from love and then you're helping others unconditionally and then things start to flow for you. Okay, so I think this video has been already way too long. Uh, I hope you saw some value in this. I hope you got some new lessons, uh, new insights. If so, then please let me know what you learned. And uh, if you got any questions, then uh, please let me know. And maybe next time I can answer your question in a new video. And uh, feel free to subscribe to this, uh, to this channel for more of this type of videos that can help you with a higher level of self-reflection so you become like a better mind hacker and once you can master your own mind, then you can tap into the unity mind, uh, which is that level of unconditional love. Okay? Alright, it's your Paul here. Take care for now. Bye-bye.